to the yellow tail is a fairly light line, only about four pound. I'm using a little stainless steel uh, number 12 hook and a little bit of split shot just above it. Bait that up with a bit of prawn, a little bit of squid or maybe a bit of pilchard. Throw it over the side and usually only about two metres below the boat you'll find the yellow, ta yellow tail starting to aggregate. You can also use the uh, Gamagatsu uh, bait jigs, they work quite well. It's about six hooks with a little attractors on them. Seeker on the bottom, tie them to your rod, just jig them up and down. Amazing how well they work. Fairly important to burley for the yellow tail, uh, bits of bread, laying pellets. Strangely enough, uh, scrape, scrapings of uh, potato work quite well. Just sprinkle it into the water, that brings the yellow tail around and you can start catching your live bait. Put them into your live bait tank, make sure you keep the water changed or at least aerated, and you're right for your live bait, for your jewfish, your kingfish, etc. We're just anchored up at the uh, Lion Island Jewfish spot. It's on the northern side of Lion Island. We're on the edge of the reef. The reef extends from here all the way through uh, to the island. And there's a dead-end gutter opening up to the ocean that funnels in. And if we can sit right in that gutter, that's where the uh, Jewfish tend to gather. The marks for this spot, uh, if you can just see the lighthouse around the front of Lion Island, the Barangay Lighthouse, and then if you look southwest, you'll see uh, Juno Point in between the back of Lion Island and Middle Head. It's a great spot, it fishes well during the summer, turn of the tide, definitely the best time. In fact, if I was to uh, pick the best time to fish here, it would be uh, with a high tide around about 8 o'clock, just after dark. And it does tend to fish particularly well when there's a bit of a southerly blowing. Now, the rig I like to use is a fairly standard deep sea rig, using about uh, 60 to 80 pound line, 10 o hook, short trace to a swivel and then a fairly heavy sinker. That heavy sinker stops the bait moving around too much because you usually have two or three lines out and you don't want getting them tangled. What we normally do even before we bait up is drop the line all the way to the bottom and we're fishing at around about 12 metres depth. As soon as it hits the bottom, feel the sink hit the bottom, pull up two good arm lengths. That's about right and then we set the line in our springer. Got a little groove in the top there, through once and again, sits in there lovely. Then we can pull the line up, put your live bait on, just pin your uh, yellow tail or tailor, whatever you have for your live bait, just pin it through the back, just, just behind the, uh, the head, throw it back over the side and you're in business. Big Jewfish comes cruising through that gutter, sees that live bait and away you go. As soon as he takes the bait, the springer pulls down, sets the hook and then releases. That lets the line run free until you can get to the line and then start playing the fish. We're anchored on the famous Flint and Steel Reef at the mouth of the Hawkesbury River. This is this very prominent reef that attracts those big jewfish and kingfish during the summer months. Now the spot you're looking for on the sound is that drop off where the reef comes down and meets the sand because that's where the jewfish tend to lie. The marks for that, if you look towards the east, you'll see Barren Joey Light just around West Head and if you look south, you'll see Hungry Beach opened up around Flint and Steel Point. Get a very strong run through here of a run out tide, up to four knots. So the best time to fish it really is the turn of the tide. And the rig we use is our standard offshore straight up and down rig, 20 to 30 kilo line, large sinker, short trace, and then a 10 0 hook. Keep it about two meters off the bottom, put a live yellow tail or a nice fresh squid straight down into that gutter that's where the fish should be lying. Now the reef extends all the way through to the shoreline. It has a bit of a saddle in the middle. And that spot's great of a night for the school dew, the tailor, the brim. The boats you can see anchored behind are just off the reef in that ideal spot for the big jewfish. So keep this in mind. If you want to get that jewfish of a lifetime, flit and still reef at the mouth of the Hawkesbury River. Feels like a flat it. We're just doing a drift off this spot between uh, Hungry Beach and Flint and Steel. It's a fairly deep water spot, about 20 metres, just over mud and sand, but it produces some nice flat at times.
These are the big dusky flathead we're talking about, of course. The estuary flathead grows up to about 10 kilo according to the state records, but I know there's been fish fish up to 15 kilo reported. Here he comes. Might need the net for this fella. See that head shaking? That's when most of the flathead are lost, right at the boat when they start that shaking their head. They have rows of needle sharp teeth and they won't actually cut you off, but if you keep the line tight, they'll saw through the line. So when you get them close to the boat, they start that head shaking. Just give them a bit of slack. Take your time, let them swim away. When they come back, lead them into the net and then you're right. This is a rig I like to use when we're fishing deep water in the Hawkesbury River. This is a Paternoster rig. About a quarter pound sinker on the bottom. A couple of uh, Gamma Gatsu wide gap hooks. These are two O's off droppers and then a swivel above. I use white bait. Just hook them through the eye. That's why the wide gap hook is so successful. They just seem to lay very nice beside the point and barb of the hook. Rig up both of those and then drop it over the side. There we go. That's our Paternoster rig over the side. And if we just drift with that rig, very good chance of picking up a few flathead. The sinker bounces along the bottom, acts as an attractor, and then the fish spot the bait, and uh, we're in business. Set it in the springer, wait for the fish to hit. There's the flathead. See how they go when they see the boat, straight down. Take your time. He's not big, but he didn't want to come ashore. I'll just lift him in. There we go. Grab a towel. And there we go. What's those spikes? See those spikes there? Either side of the head. Two little nasty ones there. Same that time. When they shake that head, you can inflict a very, very nasty injury. They're not poisonous, but they're sharp and it'll hurt. I tell you, so be very careful. Grab them with a towel, because they've also got very sharp dorsal spikes too. There we go. Good eating size. As I said before, the larger flathead, over about 45 centimetres, are the females. They're our breeding stock. And if you can, put them back. This fella, a couple of nice fillets off him, he'd be beautiful eating. We're using these... Uh, Pilchard fillet baits, they seem to be working quite well on the three hook rig. One big advantage, of course, is as soon as they take the bait, you're almost guaranteed a hook up because there's three points. There he is. Nice lizard. See that head shaking? That's when you're going to lose them. That's another advantage of using the three hook rig because generally, with three, those three bits of metal, very rarely do they get near the line, although this fella has. Just get the towel. Just grab him there. And if I can just show you his teeth, if you'll only open his mouth. Very, very fine teeth. Probably can't see them, but they're needle sharp and they don't cut through the line. But if you keep the line tight, as they shake their head, they'll actually saw through the line, and that's how you'll lose a fish. And when they get close to the boat and they start that head shake, just give a bit of slack, let them swim away and then bring them back in again. So we're going to cut up our pilchard, take a fillet off. So cut along the back, cut through the pilchard, throw that part away or use it for burley and keep the fillet that's still got the bone in it. I chop off the tail because if you don't do that, the bait will spin through the water. So we've got a nice streamlined bit of bait. We've got the gut section there that will act as burly. Yes. Yeah, another little flathead. Having a bit of a run when he gets near the boat. Nice dark dusky, just over legal size. We might let this fella go, I think. This is uh, Juno Point, one of the more famous of the Dewey hotspots on the Hawkesbury River. You can go over this with a sounder and the bottom is absolutely featureless. And you wonder why do the Dewfish sit here? 
Well, it's a run-out tide spot, and that point behind...